Hi, Mark Savage here, and welcome. It is in his speed fight time. I have both speed fights together. Um, it's just, I've took the bucket out because there's no screws holding it in, and there's no screws holding this on either. And I have no idea what that was, but it's only me in here. Anyway, carrying on. Someone's upstairs. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hang on, no screws holding that in, and uh, yeah, I've lost a train of thought slightly there. I don't know if you heard that on the camera. What the hell was that? Well, I'm not going up there. Carrying on. So, um, kickstart not working, ledger start not working, uh, the carburetor, the little pipe that goes in there snapped. I haven't got one, so I have to see if I can wangle it in. I've got to get it running to see if the little um, CDI unit. That is an oil pump one, see if the oil pump's working. If the oil pump is working when it's running, so I've got to get running first, that'd be good news, then I can actually stop pre-mixing. So we're gonna see how that goes. Anyway, if you watched my last video when I got the Jalera and this one off, uh, for a friend of a family, I was doing up his little pile of dung, I called it, I think. Some of you did notice it was a Yamaha jog. I didn't. <laughs> I suppose I should've looked at the back, really. And it's on the back, it had Amaha. So I should have guessed, shouldn't I? But I didn't really look at the back. Now, if you looked at the last video, you may have noticed, well, okay, it's got Lexmoto, because that's the only stickers I had, but I've I've blacked it all. Um, what are you stealing? Dog. I can see you. It just takes things. Now I've got one after her. <clears throat> so I blacked the engine. Um, took all the tape off of everywhere, the gaffer tape was everywhere, put a few little screws to hold that in. Um, I did put Lex Motor on it, even though it's not one, but I do think it looks a lot better with it there. A little Molossi sticker there, Molossi sticker there. He wants a sort of speedo bit, so I put that on that holds a little bracket that will hold his phone. Uh, I did look at this bit, uh, I sprayed them white again. Um, I just, you know, it was just, I undone that one bolt there and he's packed it out in somewhat with the bearings. I didn't want to mess with it in case it really does muck it up, so I've left it. He never put caps back on the tops, which to come in a packet, so I don't understand why he didn't do that. Anyway, this is all secure. Now, if you can see, little bolts in here, I drilled through here and put a little bit of tape on these just to secure them because little bolts there. But look, it is solid now. There's no need for all this bloody gaffer tape everywhere now for some of you noticing it's at a weird angle um the stand is actually coming right forward and resting on the front of the exhaust that's not good i'm going to explain him don't ever sit on it while it's on the stand because the back wheel's the floor and it will just snap the exhaust off it's going to happen um it needs a new stand the bracket is broken mangled i don't know it's just not right but anyway that's what i did to that it does run, it does start, so happy days there. Huh, she's back without the packet she stole. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to this. Front's got to come off, they've got to go. Um, I've somewhere got another set of lights, so we're going to put them on there. Um, I'll put the battery on charge. So some parts have come, the rollers have come, and the fork seals are in there, and the new battery has come as well. So that's pretty good. I've had some of you comments saying you've got a couple of 3Ds in the garage, but your mile was away, which is a shame. I don't really need too many parts. I've bought a new sports exhaust for this, and I have bought new mirrors. So, and it runs, it starts straight away, but that's the next video coming up. Back to the speed fight. So I said the bucket is out, we need to start somewhere. There's so much wrong with it. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the cover off of the engine cover off the variator, and I'm gonna see what's wrong with the kickstart. Then I'm going to check the Bendix out, then I've got to find out why the electric start's not working. Um, once we get it turned over, everything else will just fall into place. Fingers crossed, hopefully. Uh, MOT is the next April, it's August, so it was running a couple of four months ago. He said once the electric start stopped, the kick start been stopped and it was buggered. So I'm expecting good things with this. Fingers crossed, let's wait and see. Right, move it over, let's get the engine cut off and see if we can find out why the starter and kick start aren't working. So... I think you can see how shiny it is in there, all bits in there. That's from the little dog. And if you look, I think you can see that the teeth are gone. So it was just grinding round. That's knackered. Uh, let's look at the carburetor. The carburetor, way too much oil, fuel leaking out of there. 
Um, you can still shine in here. It doesn't smell right in here, I'll be honest with you. Bit of an odd thing to say. Um, yeah, I think it's possibly way too much oil. I think you can see how much oil is been coming out and and through. It's it's not it's not right. Um, bless him. I think we're putting way too much oil in here. Here, about here, should be where the little oil pipe should go. I mean, this is obviously from the tank. Um, this dangling down here is your oil CDI, um, Deloitte one, and under here, I think you can just see that little bit of pipe there. That should go along and into a little connector into here. We may be able to get it in there by other means. You never know, but we've got to see if this all works. Obviously, it runs in great. If not, we've got to find out. Um, but that should kick out and spin this round. We need to see. Uh, I want to get all this off. Um, clutch felt okay. Belt not that bad. And we've got to check the rollers and everything else. But I need to see if I can get the damn thing started first. So that's the main thing we're going to do. So this starter motor that you've got off Facebook sales. It looks new. I've got to say that. So let's get that off. We're going to bench test it. Um, and if it spins around, great, whack it back on. Um, then check the wiring, why it's not going there. But it's got click. My video, press the button, click, means the relay's working, down the starter motor. He knew that, he did know that, so that's good. Right, in a few seconds you'll find out. So, if you're going to put a starter motor on, put it on properly, the bolts weren't tight, finger tight. You need 8mm extension and extension, okay? That nicely travels through, undoes one, undoes the top one, undoes the bottom one. Piss easy. You've got to have this bit down, though. You can get in there easily. This looks like a very good starter motor. A bit grindy. Now, these have got to be in. I'm guessing that because this was only finger tight and the earth is held there, that may have been the problem why it wasn't working. So I'm going to put power to it hold it and see if it earths, see if it works. Now, this part here needs to be insulated. Tape, a cover, that's live. If you touch here or it bends down and touches, bang. All right, it's not end of the world, I know, but it's still, it might blow this up. Could even catch fire. Fuel leaking as well. Ah, oh, bang, you know. Anyway, let's have a look and see if this has got anything to it. He did say he connected it, let me have a look. Yeah, he's a little bit of insulating tape connecting these two together. Um, yeah, I'm not particularly happy why all the wires under here are cut and a bit of a mess, really. Anyway, that's um, all we had to do was uh, take the one that he had originally, do you know, and just undo it rather than cutting it. Anyway, let's have a look. So, holding the wire, jump pack. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Puts faith back in Facebook sales. Did look new. So we're gonna insulate this, get it back on there, tighten the damn thing up properly, um, then see where this goes and connect it all back up again. Well, no words sometimes. Um, silly. So, you just see that I've um, insulated the starter motor. I've now fitted it back on. It's tight, so I know it's earthed. Um, and then I went to plug it back in again. Have a look. <sighs> look, this is live wires. Can you see that? That's the uh, drop point for the... I mean, come on, you can't do that. So, I'm still hearing the clicking noise, but that's not right. I don't know if it had come away. I've got to heat shrink this, do something with it properly. You can't leave wires. Ah, oh, that's a good picture. There, that is your oil pump. Okay, there's your dangling CDI. I mean, I don't think the lad did this part or this part of it, but that's just still... Anyway, it's in there, it's on there, and yeah, it's pants. Let me uh, get all these wires properly connected with connectors. I'm not, you know, using tape with them. You need proper connectors. Let's get that sorted. So, a process of elimination. This is the relay. You could hear it click. 
Now, normally I say, you hear it, click, good as gold. I'd never expect to find the wires that they connect into cut, further along cut, and then not earthed in properly. You wouldn't expect to find that. This is junk. I like that word now. So, I've put a new regulator on the other bike. <laughs> And if I pop this on, and there we go. I am happy with that. Now turns over. Now we've got the hard work. So that's clean the carburetor, um, clean the spark plug. We're going to check whether we have um, vacuum. So you put your hand in the wet. I've often mentioned about a wet hand test. I'm working to watch my video, but a wet hand test where you put your hand at the back of the carburetor and what should happen is when you're turning over a vacuum should be caused and you should get fuel on your hand because you're actually smothering it that's how you know that your engine is good okay your seals and everything you've got compression basically because it's sucking it in that's how you know whether your engine's got compression wet hand test now you know I've done lots of videos on this so we're going to check the plug if it's wet check the spark etc etc now knowing that that's damage that, yeah, we could even have where the CDI's gone, so we've got to check the spark. Right, let's get on with it. So, took the spark plug out, bloody good spark, so it didn't damage the electrics. Hasn't been run for two days, two months, I don't know. So, a little bit of easy start, I just want to see, because I've got to clean the filter, I've got to clean the carburetor, but I just want to see if it turns over. It's just all about damage limitation at present minute. So we are on and spray. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, I forgot about the huge hole in the bloody exhaust. Let me show you. I'm going to have to cover that up somehow. So there we have the exhaust and what the hell is that? Please tell me you weren't riding this with that hole in the exhaust. It's been purposely drilled in there. Um, some sort of lamb. Anyway, if you're riding this bike some, <laughs> with that hole in the exhaust, your neighbours must have hated you. <laughs> That's all I can say. They must have been after you, I tell you. Wow, right. I'm going to block that hole up. I'd like to say I weld, but you know, one of the things I cannot do is weld. Specialist, I do pigeon poo weld. I mean, I could pigeon poo it up, but I'm not going to. I haven't got a welder. I'm going to clamp that up with um, some wadding, a bit of rounded shaped metal, and then put a clamp over it. That will help everything. That will help back pressure, starting. Don't get one of that bloody back pressure. Moped scooters, de, 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 de. that will help all round pull away everything, rollers, everything else we've got to do. So much more, but we've got a spark, we've got now electric starting, and that was really good. So, at least you know you did buy a good starter. Let's get that exhaust done, back in a minute. So, improvisation, wadding. This is professional heat proof wadding using exhausts. If you watched my, probably didn't, Dodge Ram, I cut the exhaust. So this was a nicely shaped clamp bit here, but I bent round the same size exhaust, so I cut a small piece of that, then put that over it, and then a real heavy duty Jubilee clip, clamp, should I say, and... Now it is a noisy exhaust, but it's not leaking out of the hole anymore. Bonus, so I take it back, the lad would have had a noisy bike or a really noisy bike, so now it's just a noisy bike. It is in here as well. And it is 2T. Um, did any notice how well that started? Bloody well. So I am going to clean the air filter, check the rollers, um, put all back together again, uh, sort out all this lot here. May even take a ride, but that was an easy start by the way. Clean plug. I'm not going to do the, um, the carburetor because that's only lovely. 
So I've got to sort out the oil stuff for the carburetor. And now it's running, I can check where that's pulsing. To check whether an oil pump is working, when you start the bike, look at the pipe, literally it just looks like it's just, you know, just like dribbling, like the tiny little spots, you'll see it. It's not a constant stream, it's like, it's like a pulse. So I'm gonna check that out and put a new pipe on there and see if it's coming through like a pulse. If that's working, then you won't have to pre-mix anymore and that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Sell a bike without the pre-mix. Um, and don't use e tech fuel on these because they won't like it. They just won't like it. I keep getting people say I've been using it over 10 years. In this climate and on 2T pads, it doesn't mix. It just doesn't mix. Right, that is, that's, that's brilliant. Well done me. <laughs> now the bike starts on an electric start. If I can get the dog that pops out for the kickstart, we can get that done as well because the mechanism is fine. We're going to get rid of these ridiculous lights. I just, I just, I don't know. Anyway, we're getting rid of them. And we're gonna put in a proper speed set. Much better. Let's change them now. Really simple though. Four screws, one, two, three, four. Sometimes I have two under here, but they've always been broken. So four off, let's have a look underneath. It's just, one thing after another that I'm finding that is loose, that's not put on properly. Um, well, quick look around the improvements. Front end, proper speed fight. 35 watt, not 65, both in perfectly. Top end now, all secure. Brake lever actually flicks back properly now. Floor pan that's got the four bolts in it, battery fitted. I've got to move that a little bit around. Exhaust, the tip now is facing down and I've done my little bit in there. But even when we come to this bit here, I mean look, it's wrong, but look, it's loose as anything, it's not right. So I've got to take all of that out and put proper bolts in there that connect properly. It's blowing out of here as well, that's why it's so noisy. Anyway, carburetor is really good, I'm not going to touch that. Put a little plate here, just stop the water splashing straight onto the spark plug. But it's starting to look a bit better. We're going to polish and clean it afterwards, that doesn't matter now. But already just with them silly lights off the way, it starts to look quite a nice little speed fight. I've got to check now, here is another pump I've got. This is for the oil. I've got to check if that works. I really want to get it so a person can pull up the petrol station and just put petrol in it and put two tea in here and not have to mix it. That's my goal. We'll see how that goes. So, using too much two tea. Oh, one second. Black seat, much better. Nice idea re-coating the seat, but when it's perfectly all right, why bother? Still got to do the pump yet. Anyway, two tea, using too much. Can you see how bad that is? Okay, 100 mil per gallon was not right. Realistically, I've about three tiny little cap falls in. They do run on the wing and a prayer anyway, but this is just sodding with oil and there's only one way you can get that out now. You can wash these, you can hand wash these, brilliant. But this is heavy. <laughs> Look, okay, absolutely sodding with oil. Um, there's so much going in that it's coming back out again, basically. This is why I want to see if I can get the automatic oil pump working again. Um, two reasons, it may be the CDI, but I think if the CDI, because it's got two on here, I don't think it'd run. Um, the oil pump CDI, we'll see. Anyway, if I can change the pump, put some 2T in it, turn it on, it starts spitting through, then we've got to worry about how to get it into the carburetor and how to keep it in there. Mm. Um, we're going to have to do it wang in there and make sure it stays there. Well, let me clean and wash this, and you'll come back when I am playing with the oil pump. So it really is starting to look quite a nice little bike now. I'm just doing the video, I said I always do them. But seat's back on, it's black, cut little stickers I know. They're secure, bolts are everywhere now. Um, on these bits as well, they weren't before, that's all settled down. This is all done, Bolt, bolts in there, that's connected. I had to put two little screws through here, because obviously they weren't anything to connect them to, because someone had snapped them all. 
But, hmm, I do like the old checkered bit at the back. All in, it's starting to look quite nice. So, just undone this. Where are we with the oil pump, bugger? I think it's a CDI and the oil pump. Um, so, at present minute, I'm not going to pay out for anything. I just need to sort of see where we land with this. Uh, okay. They are all really, really badly flat spotted. I mean, really badly. So bad that you can see the red through them. So they haven't been spinning for a while, not properly. I don't know what weight they are. Um, I'm going to have to get some more of these, aren't I? They're not, oddly enough, they're not too. Yeah, no, they're crap. <laughs> right, new ones of these. And then I think. Uh, clear all this up and I, I do say people say to me again and again and again can it really be this that is slowing me down yes I can't say it enough in fact I'm not gonna this is slowing you down look how bad that is okay you know what I mean clean mag just wipe it in there they're not rolling you're not changing gear properly Putting the engine under a lot more stress than these two. This bike, I think, is going to be a really fast bugger. I'm expecting great things from it. Let's see if I've got any rollers. is one very fast little ped. Let me tell you. Okay, that is one very fast little ped. Rode really well. Cracked over 40 mile an hour. Milly, sit. Ploughed up the hill at 30 odd. Um, yeah, very good. Lights all working. Everything's working as it should. Very, very happy. So what action is finishing off? I'd be happy if I get the module and then the oil pump itself. Both of them are about 50 quid's worth, then you won't have to mess around doing the old pre-mixing. However, with the speed of this thing, pump probably wouldn't keep up with it anyway, and they'd probably mix a little bit in. Once you get over 40 mile an hour, they're not too good. However, job done, I'm gonna wash this. I am very happy with it. Everything's together, everything that it should be. Happy days. Right, thank you so much for being with me. Please like, share and subscribe. Take care of us on the road. Bye-bye.